This is part two in our series of the introduction to cost terms and purposes. And in this part, we're going to be talking about the flow of costs in a manufacturing company. So before we can discuss how costs flow through a manufacturing company, we have to be aware that a manufacturing company has more than one inventory account. They actually have three. They have a materials inventory account, a work in process inventory account, and a finished goods inventory account. Now these are inventory accounts, therefore they're assets. So any beginning and ending inventories are debit balances. When we purchase materials, that increases our materials inventory account with a debit. Then once it's determined by work in process that they need more materials, they send a requisition or they requisition materials and those would then be called used materials and they would go into work in process as direct materials. Along with direct materials, we need a few other things to create a product. We would need labor and we would need overhead. So let's talk about these things briefly. Direct materials can be directly traced back to a product. They're usually a very large part of the cost of a product. Direct labor are the people actually putting the product together. They're creating the product. Also a large portion of the cost of the product. Overhead can be made up of three things. Indirect materials, indirect labor, and other overhead. Indirect materials would be things like glue, or screws, or nails, something that's a very small cost of the product, and it would, need, it would not be cost advantageous for a company to trace that to a product. Indirect labor would be, for example, the plant custodian. Other overhead would be things like rent on the plant or utilities for the plant. Now once we've put this product together and it's completed, that's called a cost of goods manufactured. And it moves from work in process into our finished goods inventory account. And it stays there until the product is sold. Once the product is sold, all of those costs, the materials, the labor, and the overhead, they are expensed at that time as cost of goods sold. So that leads us to our next discussion, the distinguishing between period cost and product cost. Period costs are expensed in the period they are incurred. Period costs are your selling and your administrative expenses or your operating expenses. Product costs are not expensed until the product is sold. So therefore our product costs are our direct materials, our direct labor, and our overhead. And as you can see by our diagram here, those costs were not expensed until we sold the product. And then the cost was called cost of goods sold. Also be aware that you could hear product cost called a couple of other things. You could hear it called inventoriable cost, or you could hear it called manufacturing costs. Beginning materials and purchases of materials combined are called our cost of materials available for use. Beginning work in process plus those product costs are called our costs to account for. Beginning finished goods and cost of goods manufactured is called cost of goods available for sale. And just to reiterate, 
direct materials plus direct labor plus overhead are called your product costs. So let's split those three up here in different combinations. Let's look at what direct materials plus direct labor would be called. Those are called prime cost. When we combine direct materials and direct labor, that's the prime cost of the product. Direct labor plus overhead is called conversion costs because it takes direct labor and overhead to convert a direct material into a finished good.